I, I know it's a lot. There's a lot of objects in the collection, but I was just wondering if maybe you could kind of give us a, a, an overview. Would it include, for example, uh, objects from the continent itself other than the, the modernist Absolutely. material? Yeah, so we have traditional African uh, sculptures. Um, I, I will say this. It can give you a holistic view or a holistic snapshot of the culture production across the diaspora. So that's so we of course we have African American, African, Afro Latino, Afro Caribbean oh, wow. uh, artists in our collection of various time periods too, right? Yeah, of uh, various types. Yeah, various types. Um, I would say yeah, of uh, various types and periods. Our collections span over four hundred years. Wow. Um, but we also have strong holdings in American and European modernists as well. Any examples you you, you can. Oh yeah, really I mean, you know, we we co we now co-own or we call it a partnership uh, of the Alfred Stieglitz collection. So Alfred Stieglitz would, was a, a gallery owner that came to us by way of his wife George O'Keefe. And the Alfred Stieglitz collection includes Picasso, Renoir, Cezanne, uh, for the European artists, but then Maz and Hartley, Arthur Dove, and many others as an American modernist. Oh. Um, so that would come to Fisk in 1949. But on the other side, when you think about uh, a few things, one, the Harlem Renaissance, we have strong holdings by way of the Harmon Foundation, but also give a lot of tri credit to both Johnson and Douglas for bringing in exhibitions and working with the Harmon Foundation. Our first Spring Arts Festival was in the 1920s. And it's amazing that we would we would uh, an exhibition would be a part of that. I'm seeing the image in my head. The piece is called Laughter, which was one of the works. I just cannot think of the artist's name mm -hmm. uh, at this time. It'll come to me later on in the conversation. Sure. But with that, uh, we've amassed an amazing collection today that sits north of 4,500 objects. Good lord, that's that's amazing. And spans 400 years. There's gaps. Um, but I think that we're working really hard to to fill that void. Uh, there's gaps uh, you, in, in really post 1980 is an area of growth for the for our collections I see. Uh, that we're working to to help fill that void. Yeah, that's that's really incredible, and I don't think a lot of people would assume that a historically black college would end up with the list of other artists that you were talking about, Mars and Hartley, all the rest of the oh, uh, yeah. Picasso and so forth. Uh, thanks yeah. to uh, George O'Keefe and, and Alfred Stiglitz. Yeah, I mean, you know, just to give even just to talk about the significance of that, um, and I'm going to talk about it in two ways. One, if you think about Nashville in 1949 or even in 1930, it's a cultural desert. I mean, you got seen and feed downtown. There was not a museum, <laughs> a gallery, anything uh, at that time. We're the cultural hub. Right. <laughs> uh, and so, I mean, the, the, the first museum is, well, there were museum movements that happened, but we did not succeed truly. Um, you've got Cheekwood, which is a botanical garden uh, that would also have work that would be on display uh, or exhibitions. Uh, but that wasn't until later. And then the Fresh Start Museum wasn't built until 2001. Wow. So Fisk, that was kind of the de the primary destination. Yes. So one, at that time, that's when you see Henry, Henry O. Tanner would come into the collection, uh -huh. the Three Marys. Yes. That would be deaccession from Art Institute of Chicago mm -hmm. to come to Fisk. You also see like a, a Man Ray and Irvin Penn happening wow. uh, in 50 and 51, wow. uh, respectively. Uh -huh. But then you have Douglas, like what's interesting looking in the archive is that you'll see letters to Douglas. So this correspondence with him bringing in exhibitions from the Met, the Brooklyn Museum, wow. New York Historical Society as a teaching resource. That's incredible. But what really, but what happens when Driscoll comes, I mean, it's amazing to look at how prolific uh, he was in terms of the exhibition schedule, but also the artist in residence. And so when you look at, uh, I mean, you already talked about uh, Jacob Lawrence, a photograph of him being on campus, an exhibition that he had on campus. Yes. Elizabeth Catlett, Charles White. Yes. Uh, and even one that was most recent that was was traveling was a, a Alma Thomas exhibition. Uh -huh. uh, Everything is beautiful. Um, and we always talk about Alma Thomas. Before she did that, that major show in 1972, she was at Fisk in 1971. Uh -huh. So if, yeah. if you were a person of color, um, 
you had to come through an institution like Fisk or Howard or many other play or Clark to have your work shown in a lot of ways. Yeah. And so that was one of the major ways that we were able to build uh, that our collection was built through that. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. What a, what again, I'm just marveling over the rich history and the uh the activity of Aaron Douglas, David Driscoll, and the others to draw oh, yeah. in so much, so much art, not just from the African American community, which was important, but outside yeah. of it, like you were saying, correspondences correspondence with the Met and some of these other institutions to uh to bring this. Absolutely. Fantastic. Mm-hmm.